Welcome to Grandma's Room, episode 98. We're back on video. Yeah. We have a legitimate camera this time. It's not a phone anymore. And legitimate mic stand. We got more mics. I got some better mics. Yeah. Better, I think. They sound better, in my opinion. Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't, I don't have to, like... You don't have to be on the mic anymore. Yeah. I mean, it obviously sounds better if you're closer to it, but, like, it still picks you up. Mm-hmm. It's not, like, echoing. Your voice isn't just an echo. Yeah. And you're farther away now. So... Today we're going to be talking about the Second Korean War, and we're going to get into some stories about um, supposed interdimensional travel, and I have a, um, there's an FBI document that I have from 1947 that actually talks about inter- interdimensional beings, like, they acknowledged it in the FBI. Okay. So we'll get into that too. And I also want to get into the James Webb telescope because they, they finally got pictures. Did you see those pictures? I did. They look fucking awesome. It's I saw one where it was the big guy sitting on the bed. I didn't see that one. Oh, uh, I saw it the other day. With his dick hanging out? Yeah. It was part of it. The picture was part of his dick. The James, <laughs> James Webb part. Wait, the he his dick was the telescope? No, 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 no. It was what they found. I turned into a telescope. I'll find it while you're doing okay. your, your two bits. But, yeah, they saw, like, I think they said 13.5 billion years into the past. Holy that. shit. They said, like, how far, because, you know, like, how light travels and stuff. They're seeing light from 13.5 billion years ago. It's mm-hmm. fucking crazy. The From what we know, the um, universe is 13.8. Like, so they're, like, close to the beginning of seeing it. Oh, shit, sure, okay. I want to see, like, if they make another telescope... What if they saw before the universe started? It was just, like, a dude's face staring back. God. All they see is, like, code, like, ones and zeros. How fucked would that be? That'd be pretty fucking mental. So, you want to get into some stories, dude? Yeah, I want to hear about the the FBI thing. Okay, okay. Dude, I'm, I'm like, pumped about... We actually have, like, good video now. Yeah. And we, we need to get some better lighting, but, like, that's... We're off to a better... Beggars can't be choosers. We're off to a good start. We're off to a good start, and I have high hopes. And we're compiling video—I mean, not videos—stories uh, for episode 100. I want to have a bunch of them for that episode. So I'll get into some interdimensional travel. So you've heard like theories about like time travel and interdimensional travel. So I just got some stories of like supposed. They're kind of short, but like interesting. I'm not sure if I believe them, but they're also—it's just they're they're weird. So the first story in 1962. Mr. R.W. Balcom and his wife left their home in Live Oak, California to go to Lake Tahoe on like a little mini vacation. And on their way, they stopped at a restaurant that they saw. They had been on that road like many times and they've never seen this place before, but it looked like an older, like not run down, but like an older restaurant. They said it looked rustic. So the service and the food were both surprisingly good. So they decided to stop on their way back from their trip as well. Like they're like, we need to stop at the restaurant again. It was really good. So on their way back, the restaurant wasn't there. And they spent the next several weekends trying to find the restaurant on that road and they could never find it. So that was it. Really? Was it dimensional slip? Were they in another universe when they ate in that restaurant? Uh, was this story worthless? <laughs> we might never know. Yeah. That was my first story and that's it. Huh. That's all I have. Where'd you get that? I don't even remember. Oh, uh, this one was from MysteriousUniverse.org. It was one of their articles. I got stories from a bunch. I forgot to write them down. Is that you fucking with this? What? With what? This. Yeah. Like, just Oh, I, I, well, I just fucking noticed it, like, wiggling out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, what the fuck? I had my hand here. I was just oh. fucking with it. <clears throat> so, here's a second story. This one's more corroborated. Like, people were actually, like, we don't know what the fuck happened here. It took place in Tokyo in the early 1990s. So, a man arrives in Japan on an international flight at Haneda. I think it's how you pronounce it, Haneda Airport. And he went through customs. He gave him a passport from a country that didn't exist. The country is called Tared, like T-A-U-R-E-D. And custom detained him, and he was shocked. He was like, why are you detaining me? Like, I've been here before. I've given you my passport before. And he was like, I didn't do anything wrong. So there's apparently such thing as a camouflage passport, and it's issued by non-existent countries. I'm not sure how that works, but it is a real thing. I looked it up, but, like, I don't know how. I don't know if it's for, like, government workers or something, or I'm not sure. It's a real thing, a camouflage passport. They thought that may have been what it was. But 
he in his passport book he had multiple stamps from like different countries including uh japan before so like it i don't think you can forge those stamps i'm sure you probably could but like they're like how did how does he have like stamps on like from us like we it looks like we stamped this before so he told customs officials that his country was in europe between uh, france and spain when they were questioning him and he said it existed for almost a thousand years he even had currency from multiple european countries he had an international driver's license and he was able to speak multiple languages so he's like a well-traveled guy and he got fed up with all that was happening and he demanded a meeting with like higher higher government authorities to be like hey what the fuck's going on like i didn't do anything wrong so he spent about 14 hours in the customs like security room at the airport and the government officials felt a little bad for him because he was just being held there and yeah so they took him to a hotel where he was to wait until a decision was made about like what to do with him or like when they could meet with government officials so two customs officials were posted outside his door with orders not to let him leave but the next morning when they went in to see him he was just gone and they were on the 15th floor at a room with one door like the one the door that they were guarding was the only way you can get out uh, the windows, they had no ledges to where he could have escaped. He didn't jump out the window. They obviously would have known if a guy jumped out the window. Yeah. And he was just gone. So they were flabbergasted as to how he vanished. And they launched a huge manhunt throughout Tokyo for the man, but they never found him. And they ended up giving on giving up on the manhunt. But, like, no, nobody knows, how, like, where he came from. What nobody knows how happened? he escaped. Like, nobody ever found him. Nobody ever found, like, a sight. Like, there was no sightings of him or anything ever. And they're just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And like, that's it for that story, too. That sounds pretty... I like that story a lot more. Yeah, it's better than a vanishing restaurant. Yeah. But, like, yeah, nobody ever knows... Like, nobody ever knew what happened to him. And he was just gone. Gone in the wind. So... Nobody knew where he came from? No. no one dared to make a slip? This stranger there among them had a bagar on his hip. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I have a third story, too. Man, these are going really fucking quickly. <laughs> Not, I don't think I have as much research as I thought I did. So, here's another one. In 1935, Frances E. Patterson was traveling with her husband and four children after a trip to Missouri. They were going back to Keokuk, Keokuk, Keokuk Iowa, and they li- where they lived. And when they were in the area of St. Patrick... I couldn't find where the area of St. Patrick was. I'm sure it's in either Missouri or Ohio, or Iowa. They took a detour because they wanted to like find some like nice scenery. They found like a back road that could take them like to where they were going. So on their detour, they reached the rim of this huge valley, and they saw a bunch of women dressed in old-fashioned dresses and like bonnets and stuff. And they were gathering water in wooden buckets and balancing them on some poles. You know how they would like carry the buckets of water on poles. And they were just transporting water. And they also saw multiple men who were also, page turn, dressed in old-fashioned clothes. They wore, like, smocks and big black hats. They had, like, big beards and everything. They just looked, like, way out of place. And they were either attending to goats or sheep, or they were collecting firewood. So, like, everybody was doing, like, old-fashioned jobs and everything. And after they left the area, because they were just sitting there watching, like, this is weird. Like, you never see this anymore. Who the fuck's gonna be back there? It's 1935, like... I guess some people could be homesteading, but like, but we'll get into why it was out of place. So after they left the area, they asked, they asked some of the locals about like in the community they were close to about like the community, community that they saw. And they were told that no such community existed. So they're like, we, but we saw these people, like there was like a village of people like doing jobs and everything. Like we saw them, like they were there and they told that it didn't exist. So they were sure that they saw it, so uh, Peterson and her husband went back multiple times, just like the couple in the first story. Like, multiple weekends they went back, like, looking for them because they were really interested in it. And they never saw them again. So, what did they see? Who were those people? Why do these stories always happen during travel? Why does my ass bleed when I poop, Ben? <laughs> do you need Chipotle away? The world may never know. Chipotle away? Yeah. I didn't. Oh. That's probably why my ass bleeds. So it was just free. Man, these stories went quick. Um, so I'll get into the FBI document. So when I was searching for these stories, I found an article called Declassified FBI Document, Beings from Other Dimension 
the other dimensions visit Earth regularly. So this theory is that um, people don't come from space. Like, you know, people say, like, they see aliens and stuff. There's a theory that they don't come from space. They come from, from a different dimension. That, like, if you're, like, off, like, not even a whole dimension, like the fourth dimension, but, like, a tiny bit, like, 3.1, that there's another world, but it's, like, out of view of us. I don't know how to explain it better than that. But a lot of ufologists ufologists believe that UFOs and aliens would actually come from these different dimensions and not from outer space. Uh, Brad Steiger, he's he's one of, like, the big UFO researchers, he said... We are dealing with a multidimensional paraphysical phenomenon that is largely originating from planet Earth. And John Ankerberg and John Weldon, which I believe are also like UFO researchers, they said, the UFO phenomenon simply does not behave like extraterrestrial visitors. So like I said, there's also an FBI document from 1947 that links UFO activity to different dimensional beings instead of aliens. And let me find, I have the document saved on my... Computer. Let me pull it up real fast. Let me pull out real quick. Okay. So the FBI document says part of the disks, talking about UFOs, carry crews. Others are under remote control. Their mission is peaceful. The visitors contemplate settling on this plane. These visitors are human-like but much larger in size. They are not excarnate Earth people but come from their own world. They do not come from a planet as we use the word but from an etheric planet which inter- interpenetrates with our own and is not perceptible to us. Like I said, like a, like po- a point dimension off or whatever. Um, the bodies of the visitors and the craft automatically materialize on entering the vibratory rate of our dense matter. The disks possess a type of radiant energy or a ray which will easily disintegrate any attacking ship. They re-enter the etheric at will and so simply disappear from our vision without trace. The region from which they come is not an astral plane, but corresponds to the locus or talus. The cervical plane? Yes. (laughs) Students of esoteric matters will understand these terms. They probably cannot be reached by radio, but probably can be by radar if a signal system can be devised for that. So this is an actual FBI document saying that, like, these people are from a different dimension. That's weird. It's, yeah, it was, it was from 1947, so keep that in mind, but, like... Well, it's like Roswell, isn't it? Yeah, that's when... What Was, was it 47? It was right... It was in the late 40s. I can't yeah. remember exactly when it happened. But, like, I don't know what... Like... Um, I don't know what... Uh, fuck, I can't think of the word. Like, what um, proof or... Yeah, like, what proof they have for writing this. But there's, like, some... There's a lot of redacted parts of this uh, FBI report. And, yeah, it says a very serious situation may develop at any time with regard to the flying saucers. If one of these should be attacked, the attacking plane will almost certainly be destroyed. In the public mind, this might create near panic and international suspicion. The principal data concerning these craft is now at hand and must be offered. No matter how fantastic or unintelligible, it may soon... It may seem to minds not previously instructed in this in thinking of this type. Um, and then it goes into what I just said about like them being interdimensional and everything. It says, we give information and warning and can do no more. Let the newcomers be treated with every kindness unless the discs are withdrawn. And then there's a bunch of redacted shit and stuff written over top of it. A heavy responsibility rests upon the few in authority who are able to understand this matter. So, yeah, that's what the actual FBI document says. Mm. It's really hard to read because it was, like, copied from an actual document, and there's a bunch of shit written on top of it and redacted. The the locus are oval in shape, fluted lengths, blank, blank, San Diego, California. <laughs> um, it's hard to read. I just found it weird that, like, FBI said there's interdimensional people, like, yeah. coming in. Especially for, like, being that old. Yeah, that's when people were, like shunned from public life for mentioning UFOs and stuff. Yeah. Roswell was 1947. Okay, so it was... Same year. What? Do you know the date? What was the date that it happened? I'm going to say July 16th. Because this was July 8th when this document came out. 
So if it was eight days before Roswell happened, that'd be kind uh, of. It says early June. Oh, wait. Uh, between June, mid June, and early July. So this came out like right as Roswell happened, pretty much. What day did you say? July 8th. On July, this is coming from Wikipedia. On July 8th, 1947, Roswell Army Airfield issued a, sp- a press release stating that they had removed a flying disc. July 8th, you said? So that the same day that happened, this document came out. Yeah. So it was probably in direct response to it. Yeah. So they would have to have some knowledge about what this was beforehand. Before Roswell happened to write this on the day that it happened. Yeah. That's Unless they're fun. just reaching out of their ass. Yeah, but like, could it be disinformation, do you think? Like, just scaring people away from like a secret project, project or something? I don't know. Because doesn't that, that's, I'm pretty sure that's pretty common. Like, if someone starts to catch wind of a project, they'll put something big out and like. Well, yeah, take re-write. away the attention. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. That's weird that they were sp- so like specific, saying like they were thinking about like. Um, let me see what what it said. That they wanted to. Oh yeah, they contemplate settling on this plane. Like that's pretty specific, saying like they know their motive and everything. Yeah. And that they look like humans. How fucked up would that be if aliens came oh, and they looked like us? Yeah. It's kind of like a synth, like you're replaced by something. I mean, would you be more comfortable with aliens from a different planet coming or just people coming from a different dimension but our same spot, like our same space? Like, because it says they're they're from Earth but not on our and not in our dimension. Would you be more comfortable with that or people coming from, like, a different galaxy? I think probably different world because like at the, least like they might the, be more humane and they could, like, reason and... They're more like us. Yeah. Like, they're more, like, to feel, like, empathetic, I would think. You, you know that's what kinda, I'm saying? Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I'd feel more comfortable with this than actual aliens coming. Mm-hmm. I don't know. No, if it's these little green aliens that are, like, fucking awesome and just want to be bros, yeah, I'll take the aliens any day, but, you know. Do you remember the whole uh, Raid Area 51 thing? Mm Mm-hmm. And Ross Patterson was saying that he wanted to fuck an alien. (laughs) (laughs) He's, no, his his direct words were, I want to clap alien cheeks. (laughs) That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty cool. What if someone live-streamed that? Oh, wasn't there a movie that came out in, like, 2011, and it was about this alien? It was Seth Rogen. Paul. Yeah, like Paul. Yeah, yeah. Was, didn't the alien like party and shit? Yeah, like the drugs and everything. If there was an alien like that, hell yeah, I'd want an alien. I think I watched part of that. I don't remember much from it though. Twenty eleven. Six point nine out of ten. Nice. Nice. It was sixty nine degrees this morning, Ben. It was. Hey, we're in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Huh. 69 is everywhere. Is there any 69 on your phone right now? Um, it's 72 degrees out, so no. Oh, shit. Shit. I can type 69 on my computer, so... Oh, I'm almost on page 69 of my notes. I'm close nice. to that. Yeah, I... I heard that movie sucked. I don't remember much of it. It wasn't... It obviously wasn't, like... It didn't stand out. Yeah. Speaking of movies that stand out... We watched uh, Hostels last night. It was very good. The movie's fucking good. It's about the Indian Wars. Mm -hmm. It was fucking good. I highly recommend it. Christian Bale, he's like an army colonel. Colonel? Captain. Captain or colonel, something like that. Can't remember. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Yeah. It was was extra packed. Watch it right now. So, Ben, let's get into the second Korean War. I want to hear about it. Yeah. So, I thought this was pretty interesting. Uh... I just found out, like, a few weeks ago while I was doing research, and, like, I know, like, I've never heard anyone talk about it before. I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah. Um, so, the Korean War, which we've kind of gone into, or I've gone into, the last, like, two or three episodes, uh, that lasted from 1950 to 1953, 
And, like, even that still kind of goes under the radar. Mm. Like, you never see any movies. There's no, like, Call of Duty or Battlefield or anything like that. Yeah, we were talking about that when you did that topic. Like, it's probably one of, like, the least talked about yeah. wars. Or um, in recent memory, I mean. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I thought this, that was pretty interesting that there was a second one that just no one fucking knew about. Were we involved in it? Mm-hmm. So this war, uh, it was, uh, this one was, like, overshadowed because of Vietnam. Because they happened at the exact same time. Okay. And there was, like, a lot more guys in Vietnam than there were in Korea. And so, obviously, like, the death toll is not nearly as substantial as it is in Vietnam. But, like, it's still important. Mm. These guys died. And uh, this is partially because the a lot of the men who were in Korea, like, before Vietnam, uh, they got pulled out. And they, they pulled out their best guys and some of Vietnam. So they kind of had the scraps, honestly, in Korea, it sounds like. And then uh, there wasn't as much fighting going on, but like, there's still deadly combat. Mm. And uh, so the main conflict was at the 38th parallel, which if you don't know, that's like the line between North Korea and South Korea. It's called the demilitarization zone. Yeah. And the DMZ zone. Yeah. And... Like, that was decided at the end of the first Korean War. And it's still, like, where they're split up today. But, yeah, so, uh, long after... Oh, wait, shit, I think I lost my spot. No, 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 no. no yes, no. I did. Damn it. Okay, <laughs> well... Is it 38th parallel? Yeah, so, like, they had a lot more trouble fighting over there. Because, like... They didn't have nearly as nice equipment or just a lack of equipment. Like, in total there, they had, th- no, they had 12 helicopters in Korea compared to the fucking where you see in the movies. There's, like, hundreds of hell, like, Apaches just flying all at one time. Mm. So they were pretty outnumbered there. Or not outnumbered, but, you know. Undermanned? Undermanned, yeah. And they're using old tanks. Like, not that they even could really use tanks in Vietnam because it's what swamp and rainforest yeah you can't really drive a tank through a jungle no and they had old equipment they're using m14s instead of m16s which the like m16 any if you've ever seen any movie about vietnam it's the rifle yeah it's the rifle i heard those were like notoriously unreliable yeah they i heard after i got my m m1 uh my stepdad he's telling me he's like yeah they actually like tried to go back to the M1 mm. after they were using them. Are they just like jamming shit all the time? M16? Yeah. Um, but they were, there were guys who brought their own M1s over or they had them shipped over like by their families and they would just use those instead, mm. which I thought that was pretty interesting. And that's in Vietnam. Yeah. That's yeah. Not in Korea. But yeah, so they were stuck with M14s. And then like the South Koreans, they were there helping, but they didn't have like, nearly as nice stuff as the guys in korea did the americans in korea mm. like they're still using m1 grands who was the koreans yeah the south koreans okay and if the, if you don't know m1 grand that was outdated by like 15 years because that was designed in 1936 and 37 and that was like a used it was used in world war Two a lot yeah like yeah because it was it was designed in 36 and america adopted it in 37 I'm okay. pretty sure. And so, yeah, that's, like, outdated by a lot, a lot of years. Because we were using them in Korea, too. But we were using... It's M14s in the, first, in the first Korean War. That was... Is that, like, the M1, pretty much, but except as a clip in it that just stays in there? It doesn't e, shoot out? E, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, th- like... We were using that and M1 grains at the same time. And so, yeah. And long after uh, the like the division of the two countries, uh, North Korea, they were still like firing onto the South Korean side. And they were just stirring up trouble any way they could. And so 13 years later, the U.S. got involved during the same time. Like I said, they sent troops to Vietnam. Uh, but there wasn't nearly the amount of men or capacity of equipment, like I said. 
so the agreement made by the end of the first Korean War, it said that like you can't put up like walls and you can't set up like a bunch of guns and forts and shit like that because there was a certain point around the DMZ zone that you couldn't like have any any of that shit just to try and like keep fighting down it's still like that right like there's a certain amount of land I think it's like so. a buffer zone yeah you can't have anything and so they were allowed to have like chain link fences and guard towers so that's like pretty much what we relied on was using that to see and like keep an eye on them mm. and so most of the three years America was there it was just tit for tat fighting like one group would come over and like blow up a truck or something like that and then, you know, vice versa. And they just keep fighting with each other. So, there was, like, there was some, like, crazy shit that went on, though. Like, there was one assassination attempt on the the president of the South Korea. And Did I do that story a long time ago? I feel like you might have. Like the group of them went into Seoul? Yeah. And, okay. Yeah, we'll catch you up to speed. Uh, like you're saying, they went to Seoul and... The the guy's house it was like the blue house or something like yeah. that, and they got within like eight hundred yards of them, and finally they were caught, and I think either they were all killed or captured, but one guy made it, made it back from that group. Yeah, I think there was wasn't there like a couple that escaped, but they were they ended up being caught. Yeah, I think one guy did make it back to North Korea. Yeah, it was just one guy that went back out of the whole group, and then there was another one that instead of trying to go through like straight through on land they went out to the, like around in the ocean okay. and there was like 12 different groups that dropped oh, there was like a hundred something people damn i didn't know that yeah and i don't it didn't really talk about how much like went on with that but like you know guys got killed or they got captured and i thought this was pretty interesting i was looking through some of the comments and it said that in some of these groups were like north korean special ops came down they got caught because of farmers and like they were like stealing shit from the farmers and they were like oh this guy's not gonna do anything and the guy had a phone in his house and he like called for like police or whatever and the north koreans never even fathomed that because mm -hmm. they never thought a farmer would have a phone in his own home because it sucks so much in north korea <laughs> yeah i like i never even considered that mm -mm. um do you think that one guy that made it back got punished oh my god for not like completing absolutely <laughs> And what happened to him? The world may never know. Or maybe we do. And I just didn't do my research. But <laughs> um so yeah, in the three years we were there, we only lost seventy five men, which like that's still not like not even close to being bad compared to Vietnam. Mm. But like like I said, those are still Americans, you know, that died. And uh I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, things almost turned into like Vietnam like type fighting because there's a few there's two different presidents who were ready to go full blown like war like full campaign in Korea yeah fuck so I wonder how much different the world would be if that happened fuck dude who knows uh, LBJ he was the first um, the USS Pueblo or Puebla I think it's Puebla because that's where the Alamo was at right I don't know. Battle of Puebla. I have no idea. No, no, that's a, that's with Mexican independence. Anyway, this ship, it, it's unclear if it was in international waters still, if it was in North Korean waters, but North Koreans capture the ship and they take their crew, like for prisoner, and LBJ was like ready to go, balls to the wall, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I can't, I can't remember what happened, but he, like, calmed down, and they eventually worked out a deal. And the president at the time of South Korea, he was, like, full guns blazing. He wanted to go in. So they both wanted to fight North Korea again. Yeah, but even after LBJ said, no, we're not doing it, the president was still like, let's go. I wonder if we did that, if North Korea would still be a country, if it would just be Korea again. I think it'd be Korea. Well, I thought this was pretty interesting. Both North and South still consider all of it Korea. They just disagree yeah, yeah. on who's right and who's wrong. I mean, like, officially, though, do you think they would, 
Do you think they would have defeated North Korea? Because North Korea, weren't they also getting support from China? Yeah, that's how, like, they won. Or not won. Did they win in the Korean War? Because, like, no one, like... I think, I, did anybody even win? Was it because it split in half? Yeah. So they, I guess they each won their own territory, but... I don't know yeah. enough about it to speak on it. No. Yeah, me neither. No. Um, but yeah, so that's like the first time that we almost invade them again. And the second one was under Nixon's presidency. Uh, this time, uh, like reconnaissance plane, like a spy plane. They were flying. I don't know if they're above North Korea at the time. I'm sure they were. But like enemy MiGs shot them down. And so obviously that covers a bit of a stir. And mm. Nixon... He was like even more out to get them than LBJ and like his like cabinet or whatever. They talked him down and they're like, you can't do this because like Vietnam. Oh, yeah. People were pissed off about Vietnam. Yeah. Like, he started people, a second war. Yeah. People fucking hate you for Vietnam as it is. You don't need this on your plate, too. He's like, yeah, you're probably right. And then when did Watergate happen? That was like mid 70s. So 72. I don't know. Was that after, so that was after the second when, yeah. did the, when did the second Korean War end? 69. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Watergate was 72. Yeah, June 17th, 1972. So um, imagine the fallout of him starting a second war and then Watergate. Yeah. On top of that. Yeah, it would not have been good. Well, the whole situation wasn't good as it is, but, you know, it would have been worse. And Way worse, Yeah, way worse. Worcester. Worcester, sure sauce yeah um but yeah after that he like withdrawed troops and they were still i can't remember how many people but it said that like north korea they captured like would just come over and take people and it was like in the hundreds or thousands i think between 1953 and 1972 so they're doing this like even after they kidnapped hundreds of thousands of people. Not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds or thousands. Oh, oh. I was going to say, holy shit. Yeah. Like, I feel like that would start a war. Yeah. If they were just kidnapping citizens, like just citizens? I think so, yeah. Taking kidnapping to, or killing people, yeah. Taking them back to, like, the true Korea mm-hmm. in their eyes. But yeah, that's it. Did we talk about... There was some story... I think it was an American who affected North Korea and like starred in Korean movies like North Korean movies does that sound familiar to you there was a Japanese actress I'm pretty sure and she was kidnapped and she was forced to be in North that, Korean movies that's what I'm thinking of did you do that before the story for this I don't think I did so I know I've seen the video it sounds familiar there's a video of simple do you know uh, simple history mm. if you guys know who or don't know about it simple history that I get some of my stuff from there like Winston Churchill wanting World War Three, mm. that's where I got that from. But they did a video about that. That's how I know about it. Mm. But yeah, they kidnapped this actress, and then her ex husband was a director, and they kidnapped him too. Did she? In- yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking of. And then she yeah. got she escaped to America, okay, or somewhere. And I think I think they still live here. Like oh, they both they both escaped. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that story sounds familiar. I can't... Did we do that story before? I don't think we did, no. I'm going to look up who that is. I feel like if you didn't, I did, but I can't remember. We're at that point in the podcast where we have too many episodes to remember. Here we go. Okay. Choi Eun-hee. C-H-O-I-E-U-N-H-E-E. I know, but during that, I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. So she got kidnapped in 1978, and I don't know when, but eventually they came to America. Hmm. Pretty sure they're still alive. It'd be a crazy story. Yeah. Get kidnapped and forced to act in North Korean movies. They returned to South Korea in 1999 after spending... Oh, shit, okay. They were abducted. They escaped... To the U.S. Embassy in Vienna in 1986. In Vienna? Yeah. So they went from Korea to Austria. Yeah, I guess they... Well, I know that guy I liked her a lot. Uh, Kim Il-sung? Is that... Kim Il-sung, that's... Um, they have grandfather? 
Oh, yeah. yeah. What, I think, was he the first ruler of North Korea? Yeah. And then it was, what, Kim Jong-il? And, and then Kim, Kim Jong-il. Jong yeah, Kim, or Kim Il-sung oh, was like, the one who captured her, and he liked her movies, and then I think he let her, like, kind of go, like, free range. It's not very smart. If yeah, you're pretty fucking dumb of him. If you're in his shoes. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's good that it, that happened. Yeah. He let her, like... But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Fucking dummy. Fucking dummy. Yeah. Idiot. Idiot. I like that story that we did. Was it you or I that did the story about uh, Nixon helping Louis Armstrong? Was that you? That was me, yeah. He, like, got him out of, like, a weed charge or something? Mm-hmm. And he didn't even know it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was about to get in trouble for it. And yeah. He, like, pulled him aside, like, hey, I like your music. Yeah, Nixon like, was like, let me get your bag for you. And, like, took him out of the plane. Mm-hmm. Because he was a U.S. ambassador. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. I, th I was thinking that he was president at that point. That's when he was an ambassador. Did no, he? Louis Armstrong was an ambassador. Nick, this was Wait, in 58. What was Nixon? Nixon was, like... Well, he ran for president against Kennedy in 60. So in 58, was he governor of something? or like Probably, or senator. Oh, yeah. Some government. Or no. No, he was a VP. Oh, he was? To who? I forget. Eisenhower. He was Eisenhower's VP? I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure. Shows how much I know about American history. Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> Fuck, I was about to bring something up. I forgot what it was. What, talking about uh, Louis Armstrong? About just, like, that time period in general. I can't remember. Do you know that Louis Armstrong introduced Bing Crosby to pot, and, like, Bing Crosby loved it? Really? Yeah. Uh, I thought he was... He's always seemed to me like one of the guys who was, like, anti-drug. Yeah, I kind of would have thought that, too, but who knows? That's just because he's, like, old and white. <laughs> That's probably why I was Irish. That. <laughs> oh, fuck, I just remember what it was. Oh, yeah, didn't Nixon start the, uh, uh, War on Drugs? Mm-hmm. And oh, badly how that backfired. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what Elvis went to talk with them about. What the, the war on drugs? Did Elvis want to stop the war on drugs? No, he wanted to pursue it, like ramp it up. Yeah, but because he was talking, he was like shit talking the Beatles the whole time he was there. But then at the same time, I heard there was a podcast that was like talking like mad shit on Elvis that I yeah. listened to. And that's when I told you, I was like, it's about Elvis, but you probably wouldn't like it. And I was talking about how he was, like, super anti-drug, but at the same time, he was on a million drugs. Yeah. But I guess he viewed it as, if they're prescribed by a doctor, they're fine. Yeah, he wasn't a junkie, or, like, getting on the streets. But he was ruining his life with prescription drugs. Yeah. It's, like, the same animal. Yeah. Same beast. I don't know. But yeah. You hear about the James Webb? Oh, fuck, yeah. These pictures that they took are fucking awesome. There's, I'll try and find it. That one I was talking about earlier for you. It looks like Hubble's deep field. Do you know the deep field picture? Just showed like a bunch of galaxies. Oh, the like that first one that they took th of up from the Hubble. Yeah, yeah. There's this picture that they took, and it shows like it has to be thousands of like little dots of light, and the stars that you see in it. I'll post it on the Instagram. Post on the Grom. Mm -hmm. And, oh shit, I just did something. I opened a new window. Okay. But, like, in the picture you see stars with, like, the spokes of light coming off of it. And apparently those are just the ones that are, like, close to us. And then there's, like, a million other little dots. And each of those dots is another galaxy. So there's, like, thousands of them. Like, this is more than they've ever seen before. Ever. And a lot of these galaxies, they look like they're, like, stretched in, like, a half-circle-ish type shape. And it's because they're so far away that the sun, like a galaxy or, or sun that's in front of them, is like stretching the light from its gravity. It, it looks fucking awesome. I kind of want to get it framed. It looks fucking sweet, dude. I'm excited to see more, like what other pictures they can <clears throat> get from this. Because they're obviously not just going to take two pictures and be done with it. Yeah. How long do we say this thing is supposed to last for? Like 30 years or something? I don't remember. I can't remember how long. I have it in my notes, but all my notes are in some drawer somewhere. That was not Christmas when we were talking about it. Mm -hmm. This thing is just fucking a beast, though. 
I want to see more. I want to see them find something weird because they're going to be able to see like they they're taking pictures of like exoplanets and stuff. And they took a picture of this exoplanet. It's like a, a gas giant, and there's a ton of water vapor like in the atmosphere. So they're like theorizing. Well, not I guess you can't say for sure, but water obviously could lead to life. Yeah. So like this, these pictures that it's taking is just proving like what are the what's the probability of us being the only life? Yeah. Ever. I just I'm on I want to see more pictures of like planets that they find. Like I like the pictures of like the like the deep field pictures they take. But I want to see more exoplanets. Because like I think it's uh spectroscopy, spectro spectrometry. I can't I don't know. But they can see the pic like the light coming off of it and I guess they use it to see color of the uh like elements or whatever is on the planet and they can use that to determine like what elements are like present on the planet mm -hmm. and that can lead to us like theorizing more about like whether life exists for sure i want to i just i want to i want proof of some sort of life yeah that'd be fucking awesome yeah that yeah, proof would be fucking mental that's my two cents on the, the james webb i can't find that picture I know I saw it. Of oh, the dude? Yeah. His <laughs> name's Wood. Oh, his name's Wood? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's Wood sitting on a bed. Okay. I'm going like, to look up Wood sitting, James Webb. That's what I looked up. Actually, I'll look up James Webb. On Instagram. I just found a picture of James Duran Webb. Life, loves to create life-size sculptures of horses out of wood. <laughs> That's what came up when I looked it up. Just a bunch of wooden sculptures of animals. There's a guy shirtless riding a wooden sculpture. <laughs> the story behind the viral wood sitting on bed meme. I want to learn about that. You should do that as a topic for the hundredth episode. <laughs> oh, I heard. I heard he's dead. He is. Yeah. Too much Viagra. One. He didn't. He didn't like the picture of him. Oh, he didn't like that picture. No. I just remember when COVID first started, when like it was all over the news, I would get sent these links like like new COVID very detected, and like you'd click on it, it was just a picture of him sitting on the side of the bed, his dick hanging down. <laughs> was he a porn star? Like what? His I don't name's know. Wood. Well, is his name actually Wood, or I mean, is it's, it? It's a like a stage name, I guess you can call it, but pseudonym. Whoa! The man in the photo is an American preacher and football coach called Wandy. Wandy Joubert the third. How the fuck did they get a picture of him doing that? Yeah. Wait, was it a meme? Like, was it not actually him sitting on the bed? Was I it would, just his face put on another guy? I don't know. I would think it's it oh. is probably him. In, in 2010, Wood did a nude photo shoot while sitting on a bed, and the photo was posted online. An internet user photoshopped the image to make his nether regions bigger, causing the internet to gain, <laughs> that to gain a lot of attention. So it wasn't even the real picture. It was just like... Fairly shop. His dick was way bigger than. Why did he take a nude? He's a preacher. Yeah, yeah. Later in his life, he had erotic photos taken of him for the gay adult film site Pantheon Productions to earn some extra cash. A fucking preacher did this. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. Damn, I've never heard of a preacher doing a nude photo shoot. God, motherfucking damn. Most of us. No, the, the meme Wood sitting on a bed, or at least we've been tricked into seeing this explicit photo of a mysterious man sitting on a bed with his genitals exposed. But there's much more behind the meme and the man in the photo. I just, that's so weird that a preacher, American preacher and football coach. What did you say his name was? Um, oh, he's also known as Big Barry. Big Barry. Okay, I'll just look that up. His name is, oh, Wardy Joubert III. <laughs> Are you looking at man of many? Um, com. No, it's H-I-T-C. I don't know what that is. Yeah, he passed away on December 11th, 2016. <laughs> oh, God. His pastor has a quote that says you can't reduce him to this picture Wardy is bigger than one photo and it's I feel like that was uh, 
poorly worded. <laughs> yeah. Born in San Francisco, he gained the name nickname gained the nickname Wood whilst playing baseball as a child and went on to become a semi professional footballer. So when you say footballer, does that mean a football player or a soccer player? I'm guessing football. Our football. Yeah, from his size. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty hard to play soccer. I don't think he could run that fast if you're... He's not fat. No, he's just massive. Yeah. Looks like a power lifter sitting on the edge of a bed with his wiener hanging out. Yeah. Wiener. His nether regions. (laughs) He's bigger than one photo, Ben. (laughs) We should get that um, framed, but have his dick blurred out so we can have it in the frame, like in the frame of the podcast. Yeah. Replace your picture with it. Oh. I'm kidding. No, no, I see how it is. Or we can just get a green screen to hang right here and just have him huge, like, right in front of us. Yeah. Preferably him green. pointing your way. Like, like his wiener. Stiff. And your face, not my face. Yeah, because it's gay. I mean, I don't want a wiener in my face. Yeah. And you uh, do, right? Huh? I said you do, right? Uh. Just saying... These mics sound way better than the other ones. Nice. There's way less, like, static in the background. I like it. Should we call it, dude? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Slow down. It was a good episode, I think. Mm-hmm. Critique us. Find us on the socials and critique us. Yeah, give we us want feedback. Comment. We need feedback. We need to make this better, bigger and better. Better than big wood. <laughs> so you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. On Twitter, we're room underscore grandma. Instagram, we're grandma's room podcast. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, all the big boys. Rumble. Rumble, yeah. Our, our video is also on Rumble. And I'm glad to have video back. Yeah. It feels good. It feels good. We definitely need some better lighting, though. Yeah. This is, we, we recently switched to the new room. And when I took the lights off the other wall, they're, it wasn't sticky anymore, so we can't stick them up on the ceiling. We need yeah. different lights. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll make it better. Figure it out. Yeah. So you want to get into the Spotify, Spotify playlists. playlists. Yeah, so we got some stuff that we like to listen to. Uh, we got, what, Grandma's Saloon, which is like country music. Let me Wait, let me pull it up real quick so I can go along with you. Um, Grandma's Blues Club, which is like bluesy style music. And we got Grandma's Guitar Case, which is like alternative or rock music, like modern stuff. Grandma's Jukebox, which is all a bunch of oldies. Mm-hmm. Grandma's Krimpus Tree, which it's Christmas, Christmas music. Um, Grandma's Opium Den, which is like just kind of vibing, chilling out music. Mm-hmm. Grandma's Trap House, which is like rap. Mm-hmm. You say clam jams? No, Grandma's clam jams. It's like a- perfect. Eighties party rock. Yeah, it's like it's summertime season. music, mm-hmm. which is fucking perfect right now. Let me see the first song on this playlist. It's loading real quick. I want to say it's Danger Zone. It better be. Oh, it's loading. It's loading. My computer slows fuck in this room for some. Ah, it's Iran. So far away. Uh, Danger Zone's fourth. What? Um, Safety Dance, Dead Man's Party by Oingo Boingo. Yeah, it's good ones. But yeah, give them a listen if, if you'd like. Mm-hmm. We don't gain anything from it, but... We just thought it might be nice yeah. to do. It's our music. Music we like. Mm-hmm. Listen to it now! Or else. Or else, um... I will personally... Anybody who doesn't listen to it, but here's the podcast, I will f- track your IP address. I will find where you live. And I will... I'll most I'll probably just break into your house and force earphones onto your head, and then you will listen to the playlist. I would just probably like mow a dick and balls in their yard, but I'll do that too. Yeah, humiliate them in front of the whole neighborhood. I just had a really a bad idea that I'm not going to say out loud too. What take the no. doors off of Terry's hinges again? No, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday we took the the the. the or the bolts out of, like, the hinges. Like the pins? Yeah, the on hinges. the front door and the door to Terry's bedroom. He still hasn't found his room door yet. Yeah, because he hasn't been here. He but. got he got home from work, and he opened the door, and it fell off. And he was just like, 
what the fuck? <laughs> it was way, it was way more underwhelming than I was hoping it would I was, be. I wanted a, a big reaction out of it. I was pretty disappointed. Yeah. But, you know. Just the way the shit winds blow. Mm-hmm. Way of the road. Oh. Any last words, Ben? Uh, thank you for being here. Just for stopping by your old grandma's house. Mm-hmm. Could have been anywhere else, but you stopped in on us. Yeah, you shared a cookie and a dabble of milk. Mm-hmm. A saucer of milk? A saucer of milk. So, okay, I want one more... <laughs> Bless you. So, before we leave, Ben, yeah, I just want one random thought that pops in your head right now, and I'll stop the, po- I'll stop the podcast right after you say it. Um, Baja Blast Syrup. Okay.